Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some of our basic rules for finding derivatives of functions without using limits. So we're going to look at the power rule and some de uh, derivatives of sum and differences and the derivative of constants. And we've actually proven most of these rules in our previous chapter when we were working with the limit definition of the derivative. And so we're just going to jump right into the application of these rules. Now, the power rule for derivatives is if I want to take the derivative with respect to x of x raised to the n power, what I would do is I'm going to take the exponent of n, I'm going to bring it out front, and then decrease the exponent by 1, and that's going to become my derivative. And this works for all of my power functions, provided that if I go through this process that um, the function n minus 1 or x to the n minus 1 exists. So let's look at this first one here on the left. I want to take the derivative of f of x equals x to the fourth power. Well, the derivative f prime of x is going to equal, bring the exponent out front, so 4 times x, and then the exponent would be to the 4 minus 1 power, which means that our derivative is going to be 4x to the third. Now let's look at the second one. So I want to take the derivative of f, which is the cube root of x squared. Now the power rule for derivatives works best when you have the exponent written for the x. So I would actually rewrite this cube root of x squared as f of x equals, that would become x to the two-thirds power. And then I would apply my power rule. So to do the derivative, we would take the exponent out front, so be 2 thirds times, decrease the exponent by 1, so 2 thirds minus 1, and so our derivative in this case is going to be, we would have 2 thirds times x to the negative 1 third power. And I could rearrange that. Uh, if it was multiple choice, it probably would be. We're going to have 2 over 3 times the cubed root of x. And let's look at another one. So here I want to take the derivative of 1 over x to the fifth power. To do the power rule, it has to be x raised to a power, and x cannot be down here in the denominator in order to do so. So I need to bring the x to the fifth up in order to take the derivative using this rule. So f of x would equal x to the negative fifth power, and then do my power rule, which says that the derivative of f would be negative 5 times x to the negative 5 minus 1 power, which would be equal to negative 5 times x to the negative 6. And I could rewrite that as negative 5 over x to the sixth power. All right, now remember here, so we'll get away from the power rule for just a moment, is that if I take the derivative of any constant function, that derivative is always zero. And the reason why that is the case is because a constant function is the line y equals, like y equals 2. That's a constant, num constant function where y is always the same thing. The slope of the line y equals 2 is equal to zero. So that's why the derivative of a constant, just a number, is always equal to zero. Now, we also have the constant multiple rule, which says that if I have, if I want to take the derivative of something that is a constant times a function, basically, I can pull the constant out, take the derivative of the function, and then multiply the constant back to it, just like what we could do for properties of limits. And so to see this in action, we're going to do a couple of derivatives here. And so I want to find the derivative of 4x to the third power. So the derivative of f in this case, so f prime of x, it would equal, I could take the 4 and say that's going to be the same thing as 4 times the derivative with respect to x of x to the third, which would make 4 times the derivative of x to the third would be 3x squared, which makes 12x squared. So there's my derivative function, 12x squared. Likewise, 
for the one right here beside it, I could do the same thing. So I have four over three x to the fifth power. If we're gonna use the power rule to take our derivatives, we need to rewrite that as uh, x not being in the denominator. So I'd write this as x to the negative fifth power. And now I would differentiate. So because I have four thirds times x to the negative fifth, I'm gonna write this as the derivative of f it's going to equal, pull the constant out, so 4 thirds times the derivative with respect to x of x to the negative fifth power. Now I could do the power rule, which says that that derivative of x to the negative fifth power would be 4 thirds times exponent out front, decrease the exponent by 1. So there would be my derivative, and everything else we do from here is simplifying. So I'd have negative 20 over 3x to the 6th power. Okay, and the last rule we're going to look at here for this video is we're going to put some of this stuff together, and we're going to look at doing the derivative um, of multiple terms that are being added or subtracted at the same time. So if I have two functions, or two terms of x that are differentiable functions, and I'm adding them together and I want to take their derivatives, what I can do with this rule is I can take the derivative of u and the derivative of v separately, then add or subtract my answers. This only works for when you're adding and subtracting. It does not work if the two functions are multiplying and dividing. So let's put this in action. So I want to find the derivative of each term. So the derivative of f, in this case, is going to equal so I just go one term at a time. So the derivative of x to the third power would be 3x to the second. And then plus the derivative of 4x squared would be 4 times the derivative of x squared, which would make 8x to the 1 power. And then we work our way to the next term. The derivative of negative 3x. Well, technically, x is just x to the 1 power. So if I'm taking the derivative of negative 3 times x, it's really x to the 1. The power rule says that would be negative 3 times x to the 0, which is negative 3. So that third term's derivative is just negative 3. And lastly is the derivative of just plus 2. Well, the derivative of 2, that's a constant. That derivative is 0. So here's our derivative function. Okay. Let's look at the next one here. So I have this function of x that I wish to take its derivative of. In order to apply the power rule, I can't have x in the denominator. So I need to do some rewriting to make this process easier. So I'm going to rewrite f of x. Now I have that exponent of 4 being applied to the negative 2x. So I'm going to kind of I'm going to do two steps at once. I'd have 3 over negative 2 to the fourth power makes 16. And then I have x. I'm bringing x up out of the denominator, so it'd be x to the negative 4. Then I have minus. I'm going to rewrite x over 2 as 1 half x. And then I got plus 1 third. And so here's my function I wish to take the derivative of. So the derivative of f here, we're going to take the derivative of each term individually because we're all adding and subtracting. So I start with this first one. I can do the power rule here for x. So I take the negative 4, multiply it out front. So 3 over 16 times negative 4 is going to make negative 3 fourths times x. Decrease the exponent by 1. Negative 4 minus 1 makes negative 5. Then work your way to the next term. The derivative of negative 1 half times x is just going to be negative 1 half. So I got minus 1 half. And then the derivative of the constant 1 third is 0. So I'm not going to write plus 0 here. And then we can clean this up and say that our derivative function of f is going to equal negative 3 over 4x to the fifth power minus 1 half. Okay, lastly here, we have the function of f that is the product of 2x minus 5 times 4x squared minus 1. Now, your instinct right now, being new into these derivative rules, might be to say, hey, is the derivative of f, is, it, is that going to equal the derivative of 2x minus 5 
times the derivative of 4x squared plus 1. And if it was that, we would basically have the derivative of the first set of parentheses was 2, and the derivative of the second set would be 8x, and we would say, oh, 16x, is that right? They actually, and the answer to that is no. I cannot take the different, the derivative of the product of terms like we can for sum and difference. So that is not the case there. I cannot do that. But remember that we got negative six, we got 16x. And if I have the product right now, what we would have to do is we'd have to multiply this thing out so we see all the terms that are adding and subtracting. So I need to completely foil out this problem, which would make 8x to the third plus 2x minus 20x squared minus 5. Okay? And I don't care what order the terms are in, but now we're ready to do our derivative now that everything is expanded. And we're going to apply our power rule from here. So the derivative of f is going to equal, take the exponent, multiply it out front. So that first term is going to be 24x. Take one away from the exponent. 3 minus 1 makes 2. And then I got plus. The derivative of 2 times x is just 2. And then I have to go to my next term, the derivative of negative 20x squared. Well, I can do the power rule here, take the 2, multiply it to the negative 20. That's going to give me minus 40. Take 1 away from the exponent of x, so I got x to the 1 power. And then lastly, I got the derivative of negative 5. The derivative of a constant is 0. Here is my derivative. Notice how it is not 16x. So I cannot take the derivative of a product the same way we do sum and difference. We're going to learn a rule for that in an upcoming video.